Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on the Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. After a weekend dominated by news of the Aam Aadmi Party government in Punjab and the Punjab police's action against Amrit Pal Singh and Waris Punjab Day, we asked, is this a case of better late than never? Or has the Aam Aadmi Party chosen its timing very carefully and perhaps wisely? And secondly, is there truth to the criticism that the Aam Aadmi Party is slow and hesitant to go after Amrit Pal Singh? Or is that in fact being unfair? Joining me to answer those questions is former Rajya Sabha MP from Punjab and former Law Minister Ashwini Kumar. Mr. Kumar, this weekend the Punjab government took action against Amrit Pal Singh and Waris Punjab Day. As of today, 112 of his associates have been detained and arrested, but he himself continues to elude the police. The problem is this happened almost a month after the Ajnala incident. So in this case, is this a matter of better late than never? Or do you believe the Aam Aadmi Party was sensible in taking its time and chose its moment to act wisely? Which of the two? Well, in my personal view, uh, the latter seems to be a more fair assessment. I think the Punjab police wanted to be absolutely certain that its operation would succeed. And as far as the Ajanala incident is concerned, I have to mention about it because that is the genesis of what is happening today. At that point of time, the Punjab police chose uh, wisely not to go in for precipitate action because as you know, the agitators were carrying Guru Granth Sahib with them and, and any act of sacrilege would have been extremely counterproductive. But as far as the situation now is concerned, I think the time that has been spent in taking action was, was possibly the result of large scale consultation with the central government to make the operation successful and considering uh, greater intelligence inputs of what could be done and what could not be done. You referred to the Ajanala incident which happened on the 23rd of February. Let's talk about that for a moment before we proceed further. At the time, there was a lot of criticism that in fact the Punjab police had allowed a thousand or so supporters of Amrit Pal Singh to surround the Ajnala police station and then let them off without action. In fact, at the time there was concern that Lovepreet Singh, who'd been detained by the police, was also released on the grounds that after detaining him, they had no evidence to do so. People said this was a sign of weakness. This was, in fact, encouraging Amrit Pal Singh. You disagree with that? I disagree with that for the simple reason that people on the ground who are supposed to be the best judge of how to handle the situation so that it doesn't become counterproductive, uh, are the people we have to trust. And the police could not have foreseen that hundreds of people will carry Guru Granth Sahib with them. And we have seen in Bargadi what happened. An act of sacrilege relating to the holiest of the holy text of the Sikhs is something that is absolutely um, uh, incomprehensible in Punjab. And for that matter, the religious sensitivities were, were preserved by the Punjab police. They took the strike uh, on them. In fact, several policemen were injured. I would give the benefit of doubt to the Punjab police. They were mature and sensible in handling the situation. And now they have taken the action. 
So in a nutshell, the criticism that they faced at the time of Ajnala, you're saying is unfair criticism. It failed to understand that if they had acted whilst the Amrit Pal Singh supporters were holding the Guru Granth up in their hands, the situation could have become inflammatory. So the criticism doesn't understand what the consequences would have been if they'd acted at that time. This is my view. And I've, I've maintained it consistently. It is very difficult uh, to be judgment. It is very easy to be judgmental after the event. But people who are on the ground know what the situation looks like. And it was a volatile situation. Okay. Seen Let's come. How the whole thing unfolded in the eight. Let's come to the situation today. It's almost two days since they first tried to arrest and detain Amrit Pal Singh and he continues to elude them. And even as we record at around 12.30 today, Monday, we have no idea where he is and the police have no idea when they'll get him. How concerned are you about the fact that this man has become a fugitive from justice and for two days the police can't find him? I am concerned and it is rather inexplicable that despite the intelligent inputs and despite the bandobast at a very large scale that the Punjab police uh, uh, had done, uh, he has escaped. But it is not uh, altogether um, uh, unforeseen. I mean, the fact is that we have seen these things happen in the past as well. Why it happened in, in the circumstances of this case, I would not be able to comment on. I am not privy to all the facts, but from what I've read and what I see on the TV screens, it is rather inexplicable for him to have escaped the police dragnet. But that does not mean that the police uh, was in a way remiss in, in, in trying its best to arrest him. It serves nobody's purpose not to arrest somebody like Amrit Pal at this moment in time, when the whole country is, is, is really concerned about what is happening in Punjab. Now, four of Amrit Pal Singh's closest associates were taken overnight by the Punjab police to Dibrugarh in Assam and are detained there. I'll ask you two questions about that. A, do you believe this was a wise decision to get them out of Punjab and possibly as far away as Assam? And secondly, does this also suggest close coordination between the Aam Admi Party government in Punjab, the BJP government at the center and the BJP government in Assam? To answer your first question, it is a standard procedure and standard strategy and technique of the police to remove these kind of offenders from the state in which they operate by which, for the simple reason that their presence could uh, inflammate public sensitivities and religious sensitivities. So I think they've removed them from the scene of their operation. It's a wise tactical strategy. As far as the cooperation between the central Assam and Punjab governments is concerned, it is writ large and happily so. I think an operation of this kind would not have been possible without the central government acting in concert with the Punjab police and, and, and roping in uh, the state government of Assam. I think it's a wise strategy, well orchestrated and well executed. Let's talk a little about the attitude of Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Man to Amrit Pal Singh and more importantly to the belief that many held that the Khalistan sentiment was once again resurging in Punjab. His original position was that a thousand people don't represent Punjab and he dismissed such concerns in late February with those words. But even as recently as Friday, that's just three days ago, he told the Hindustan Times there is no surge of radicalization in Punjab. And yet two days later, it seems he's changed his position and done a U-turn when he acted in this fairly effective way against Amrit Pal Singh. Do you believe there's been a change in position tantamount to a U-turn in Bhagwat Man's position? I think these kind of volatile situations unfold on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the national consciousness has been aroused as to the gravity of the situation in Punjab. And the chief minister, while he may have been right in saying that 1,000 people collecting in one particular place in Punjab does not amount uh, to treating it as a Punjab sentiment. He may be right technically on that, but I think he was entitled to change his view and he has changed his view and taken stern action. I think it is, uh, um, there's nothing wrong in that. 
So you do accept he's changed his view, but you're also adding there's nothing wrong in changing your view. Yes, you, you react according to an evolving situation. All chief ministers do, and they act on advice. I don't know. Maybe the Punjab police ought to have advised him to act at a particular point of time and not at, at a B point of time. I don't know. I'm not privy to that. But yes, technically, for him to say that a collection of a thousand, thousand, thousand people in one state in Punjab does not necessarily amount to very good say so. But it is the job of the chief minister and the chief executive to constantly evaluate an evolving situation, which today seems to be getting out of hand. And I think the central government and Punjab government in unison and in concert have taken the right step in the right direction. OK, I take your point that chief ministers have a right to change their position and take and do a U-turn. And there's nothing wrong if they do. But what about the fact that as recently as Friday, which is just three days ago, and incidentally, just one day before the action began in Punjab, he told the Hindustan Times there's no surge of radicalization in Punjab. Your blogs at the time of the Ajnala incident were very concerned about the potential for a resurgence of the Khalistan sentiment. And yet just three days ago, the chief minister saying there's no such resurgence. Well, that is the chief minister's view. And I sincerely hope that his view is correct. And when I wrote about it, I said, this is a, this, these instances in Najnal at that time, when I wrote, were a grim reminder of the sorry uh, and a very sordid chapter in Punjab's history of the unfolding of the separatist uh, movement. And this is how it all started. I sincerely hope it doesn't uh, extend or grow, but, but we have to take timely action to ensure that there is not, there is no perceived laxity on the such uh, tendencies because if you if you if you give them too much time then they can easily uh, unfold into something much bigger and that, that is the okay let's talk about Amrit the whole purpose Singh. of the central government and the Punjab government acting in unison the line from your side is beginning to fracture and break up let's keep our fingers crossed Mr Ashwini Kumar Let's move and talk now about Amrit Pal Singh. In your opinion, and you understand Punjab and you understand Sikhs better than most people, in your opinion, can someone like Amrit Pal Singh become a credible face of a resurgent Khalistan movement that threatens Punjab? I know that at the moment he's modeling himself on Bindranwale, but till late August last year, when he returned from Dubai, he had cropped his beard, cut his hair, and looked very different. In fact, by training, the man is said to be a mechanical engineer. He's not a religious scholar, which Bindran Wale was. So can Amrit Pal Singh really become the credible face of a resurgent Khalistan movement? I think the idea of Khalistan is dead in Punjab. I think a lot of suffering which the people of Punjab have suffered since the decades in, of the 80s, has, has given us one lesson, that Khalistan as an achievable idea is dead, and it is not going to happen. Whether some people persist in that fallacy or persist in, that, in the dream of creating a Khalistan out of Punjab uh, is their business. But the people of Punjab, lock, stock, and barrel, including the Sikhs, Hindus, Christians, and all sections of society uh, abhor the very idea or the possibility of a Khalistan. Okay, I accept your point, Mr. Kumar, that the very idea of Khalistan is abhorrent to all sections of the Punjab population. But there is a bigger, broader picture in Punjab, and let me put that to you. Punjab has a drugs problem. It has an unemployment problem. There are serious farmers issues which continue to rankle. And of course, Pakistan is just across the border, frequently sending in drones with equipment and arms. Against that background, that cumulative background, is the additionality of Amrit Pal Singh a cause of concern? It is. It is a cause of concern. And all the issues that you have highlighted certainly exist in the border state of Punjab. And because it is a border state, it is susceptible to various um, uh, machinations by uh, by by our uh, uh, by our neighbors, and that is why 
uh, any possibility of inflaming religious passions and inciting religious fundamentalism can certainly add to an already difficult situation in the border state. And that is why the need for vigilance, that is why the need for unity, and that is why the need for concerted political action. Now, of course, as you said, the danger or the threat from Amrit Pal Singh is because of his capacity or alleged capacity to inflame religious passions. I want to actually question that. A lot of people have pointed out that by involving the Guru Granth Sahib as a sort of defensive shield in the Ajnala incident, he's actually offended Sikh sentiments. Others point out that he's upset Sikhs because his supporters have demanded that chairs be removed from Gurdwaras, forgetting that for the elderly, it becomes very difficult then to go to Gurdwara. Now, those are issues that also matter to people and they are closely related to the faith. Do you think that there are also areas where Amrit Pal's capacity to appeal to the Sikh faith is undermined by some of the things he does? Indeed, that is so. And that has been brought out quite vividly uh, in the recent days in Punjab. I have never opined that he has the capacity to mobilize Punjab on the scale uh, that he, he wants to or he would want to or separatist uh, forces would want to. I don't think that's happening. That was the opening part of my uh, my last answer, that Punjab has rejected the idea of se separation from India and the creation of a Khalistan state. That is not happening. There is no sentiment in its favor. But even so, the possibility of mischief makers to try and, 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 and enrage sensitivities uh, and inflammate uh, sensitivities is always there. And, and Punjab is a deeply religious state. When, will, when what will appeal to somebody we don't know? So we have, if I've heard you correctly, a complex picture about Amritpal Singh. On the one hand, he has the capacity to appeal to religious sentiment and inflame those sentiments. And this is clearly what he's trying to do when he dresses and behaves and tries to look like Jalal Singh Bindranwale. But on the other hand, his understanding of Sikh religious sentiment seems flawed because he uses the Guru Granth Sahib as a defensive shield and that upsets and annoys many Sikhs. He also passes these rules about no chairs in Gurdwaras without understanding that it then becomes very difficult for the elderly. So he both appeals, but he also at the same time puts off people on grounds of his religious positions. That is true. In which case, to what extent does the fact that in 2023, he has the advantage of social media make a difference to his capacity to do mischief? Unlike Bindranwale in uh, the early 80s, there was no WhatsApp then, no Twitter then, no Facebook. All three exist. All three can pass messages, which is why for two days, internet connectivity in Punjab has been cut by the police. But it will have to be restored. How much of a weapon is that in the hands of someone like Amrit Pal Singh? It is a big weapon. Social media is a big weapon in the hands of anyone who wants to create mischief, more so in the hands of people who want to create mischief. There's a tendency on the part of people to be excited and seduced by something extraordinary or out of the normal. And he is quite capable of reaching his message through um, the social media to a much wider audience uh, compared to what was available to uh, Janal Singh Bhindrawale. There is no doubt about that. And that is why the Punjab government has taken the right step uh, and the central government in suspending the internet. And this is what we see happening in most of the places where such kind of agitational politics uh, seeks to disrupt the unity and integrity of India. Uh, therefore, I to answer your question, you are spot on when you say that the capacity to do mischief has been heightened several times by the availability of social media platforms. And this is where the challenge of handling Amritpal becomes even greater still. That is true. It is true. We cannot, afford, we cannot afford any missteps in the handling of the situation on the part of the police or of the government. One more question about Amrit Pal Singh, and this is something that he himself has said in the occasional television interviews he's given. He says that if the BJP can talk about Hindutva, why can he not talk about Khalistan? Is there a danger 
that the BJP's stress on Hindu revival is creating the opportunity and perhaps even the justification for a Khalistan revival. Because this is precisely almost word for word what Amrit Pal Singh has said. But you know, one can always stretch an analogy. But in my personal view, and I say so in my personal view, um, this is comparing uh, apples and oranges. Uh, Hindutva may have a particular appeal on an all India basis to particular uh, people of a particular faith, but Hindutva is not about separatism or secession. Khalistan is about the unity and integrity of India. There is a fundamental difference. And therefore, much as people who oppose Hindutva as a political philosophy may agree that it has the potential of polarization, which probably it does have, but to compare the Khalistani or the separatist movement with the Hindutva would be wrong in my personal view. You're absolutely right in saying that Khalistan stands for secession and the breakup of India, Hindutva does not. But Hindutva stands for the conversion of our secular republic into a Hindu Rashtra. Let me at this point quote the precise words of Amritpal Singh. They appeared in the Hindu on the 4th of March. Here, has the Prime Minister or Home Minister ever said that they will stop people who talk about a Hindu Rashtra, he asks. It means there's discrimination, he adds. Sikhs have their aspirations and Hindus have theirs. While they, the Hindus, can freely talk about theirs, we, the Sikhs, can't. I firmly believe that the Khalistan movement cannot be stopped from flourishing. Those were his precise words as quoted by the Hindu. In a sense, what he's saying is that if you want a Hindu Rashtra, that undermines India as much as my demand for Khalistan. But if you can make your demand publicly, why can't I make mine publicly? That's in essence what he's trying to say. I, I'm not here going to join issues with this absurd argument and this absurd analogy given by Mr. Amrit Pal Singh. As I said earlier, the two are absolutely different. One may disagree with a particular point of view as far as politics of this country is concerned, but there can be no uh, comparison between Hindutva and a separatist movement. And if he says that uh, because of a particular political philosophy, which is a dominant philosophy of a particular political party in the country today, uh, he has a right to ask for secession from India and to carve out a new state. I think he has wholly misunderstood uh, Hindutva or, or, or people who, who uh, prefer uh, that particular philosophy. One last question, and this goes back to what you said earlier, that the idea of Khalistan is abhorrent to all sections of the Punjab population. Therefore, do you believe the time has come for important Sikh institutions and indeed important Sikh individuals to speak out against what Amrit Pal is saying and apparently stands for? And if the answer is yes, that people should be speaking out, are you concerned that they are not? The Jathidar of the Akal Takht has spoken but it wasn't quite as clear and unequivocal as one would have hoped. He was as concerned about the treatment of young Sikhs as he was in implied criticism of Amrit Pal Singh. Do you think voices criticizing, condemning Am Amrit Pal Singh should be more clearly heard? Well, I have absolutely no doubt that it is an, a national imperative. It is absolutely necessary for the Sikh intelligentsia and the thinking people in that community to stand out against anything that is remotely suggestive of, of a separ separatism in the country. And it would help a great deal if these voices came from the community itself. And I must say that I've heard on the television several such voices, maybe representing political parties and some others, who have said that the, the activities of uh, Amit Pal Singh are unacceptable. And please don't forget that in the dark days of the 80s, when the uh, separatist movement first started in Punjab, the Sikhs uh, of Punjab suffered as much as the Hindus. And, and all peace-loving people in Punjab are dead set even against the thought of the resurgence of this sentiment again. And I think people have learned from history that it is easy to be silent, uh, but you have to pay a very huge price for your silence when there's a duty to speak out. And I think the Sikh community, the Sikh intelligentsia would serve the nation much, much, much more if they spoke out and spoke out loud and clear. 
against anything that is suggestive uh, of uh, breaching or, or, or challenging the unity, integrity, and sovereignty of India. Mr. Kumar, thank you very much indeed for this interview. I'll point out two things to the audience because I think they're very important. You believe that, in fact, the timing of the action by the Ahmadmi Party government and the Punjab police was wisely chosen. You believe it would have been a mistake if they had acted precipitately at the time of the Ajnala incident of February the 23rd because that would have inflamed passions because it would have looked as if they were attacking people carrying the Guru Granth Sahib. And the second thing that you pointed out, and I think this is equally important, and I'm quoting you now, that there is a duty on behalf of the Sikh community and important Sikh institutions to speak out and to clearly establish that they do not agree and endorse the call for Khalistan or the inflaming of Sikh religious sentiments, both of which it seems Amrit Pal Singh stands for and is trying to do. Thank you very much indeed for this interview. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on the Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me.